Minister now and speak to Justice Minister Robert Buckland QC, who supports Boris Johnson to be the next Conservative leader. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Good evening. Now, can you clear up one thing for me? Because I'm rather puzzled. You voted Remain in the referendum, you supported the withdrawal agreement, and you do not want a no deal Brexit. I'm just confused why you've got a candidate in among the seven, Rory Stewart, who seems to fit that brief, but your choice is not him, but Boris Johnson. Why is that? Well, first of all, on Brexit, Boris Johnson has made it crystal clear that he does not want to deliberately pursue a policy of no deal. He does not want the sort of crash out that we would be bad for our economy, our security and our union. And I believe that uh, when you choose a leader and a prime minister, you're choosing somebody who not only uh, can reflect the broad view of opinion within the party, but who can also take the fight to Labour and really tackle some of the dangers that are posed by Jeremy Corbyn and his extreme uh, views, which I think will damage our country, erode uh, our our economy and actually mean that the public services that we value will be With left due respect, poorer as a result. It's not on your ballot. I mean, it's not a choice between Boris Johnson and Jeremy Corbyn. There's a candidate there who seems to fit with your profile. I mean, some cynics will say that maybe you're getting comfortable being in office and in government with the trappings of all of that. And you want to be on the winning team and the momentum is with Boris. And therefore, you're going with that due to ambition and herd instinct rather than due to a point of principle, which would put you more in Rory Stewart's camp. No, I disagree. I have consistently indicated that uh, I want to see a candidate who can actually win for the party and bring us together. I certainly, I think I'm sticking my neck out by doing what I've done because I want to try and bring people together. I was one of the architects of the Malthouse Compromise back in January together with colleagues from across the party because I genuinely believe that we need to find a solution for this within the governing party to actually get on with the job, to lead and then to be able to take the fight to the opposition and to talk about all those vital domestic policies that I know many people are it's, deeply concerned about. It's quite interesting that you see Bob Boris Johnson is the compromise candidate. Well, no, I mean, uh, Boris Johnson is somebody, I think, who, as Mayor of London, demonstrated that he was moderate, he ha was liberal in his instincts, he had an inclusive agenda, he was governing very much from the common ground of politics. Or, although, and I mean, sorry to interrupt, but there'll be others who will say that was all very well as Mayor of London, which is a largely ceremonial position in local government. He held one of the great offices of state as Foreign Secretary, and not a lot of people have a lot of good to say about it, including most conservatives. Conservative MPs who don't trumpet his record in, in the Foreign Office. Well, I think his record on Russia and the Skripal incident was actually a very good one. And I think that we have to look at uh, uh, him in the round in terms of what he has to offer the future. And you what know, this is, is that? an election that is, well, I've already explained that I believe he's the person with the charisma, the optimism, and the character to take on the fight to Labour and actually to lead the party in a, in a much more upbeat way that uh, can demonstrate that this is a great country in which to live and work. It's a great, it's a country with a great future and somebody with that outlook, I think, is the right person for these times. You know, politics is in disarray. The two-party system itself is in question. Parliamentary democracy itself is under scrutiny as never before. Can I, I think just, we need sorry, we're very short of time. I'm just interested the in the... that he has, to, and I think that's why he deserves our support. It's interesting, though, isn't it? Because optimism and charisma on the one hand wouldn't make up for the lack of a plan on the other. And we haven't heard many straight answers to straight questions in Boris Johnson's campaign so far, have we? Well, I disagree. I think uh, we know who he is. We know where he comes from. This uh, campaign has only just begun. This was round one. It was a very good result from him, for him, but it's not over yet. There are going to be plenty of opportunities during this campaign for him to be questioned and scrutinised. So so that's what uh, he expects to happen. And that's what I think will yield forth a very productive well, I'm, I'm, leadership campaign. I'm glad you feel so clear about that. Perhaps you could clarify something for us, because on the question of whether the candidates are prepared to prorogue Parliament um, over the a no-deal Brexit in October. Uh, the Times newspaper reports that Boris Johnson told the um, hard Brexit ERG group um, that he would not explicitly rule it out. What does that actually mean? 
Well, look, I mean, what newspaper reports might carry about who said what to whom is not a matter for me to go into. What I'm clear about is that he understands the uh, obvious limitations of, of the role of government when it comes to Parliament uh, and not uh, making any rash decisions and boxing us into a corner or doing something that would actually provoke perhaps a collapse of the government, uh, you know, would be something very much in his mind. You know, frankly, I've had plenty of discussions with him that lead me to conclude that he is pragmatic I'm and sorry, realistic I'm enough to, to understand again, that but I don't um, what really happened in October the might, is, not foresee, is not particularly easy to predict. What I'm trying to say is that what happens later in the year, in October, is not easy for any of us to predict. What I'm looking for is somebody who is prepared to adapt to the circumstances, yes, to lead and provide a clear outlook as to what, what they want, but to understand that, uh, frankly, a lot of these decisions are not going to be entirely in the control of the government. This is an ongoing negotiation and there are many factors at play here. Mr Buckland, thanks so much for joining us.